Five fans all over the world. It's Daddy P with Slap Pappy Gorilla. What? Hey, Jerron Boots Ennis and Tim Zoo got a lot in common. I'm going to tell you why. The 147 pound division welterweight and 154 pound division is locked up. They won't let me out. They won't let me out. Locked up. Hey, them jokers locked up, man. Hey, Errol Spence Jr. and Taz Bud Crawford got 147 locked down. I'm talking about all four belts. Can't nobody do nothing in the division. And then you got at 154, Jamel Charlo all by himself. Got it locked up. Hey, nobody can't do nothing. Tim Zoo over there looking crazy. And uh, his management team talking about, yeah, we understand, you know. Yeah, we understand. Yeah, y'all understand that man finna get paper. But at the same time, you know, Tim Zoo like, man, hey, I want to fight, man. Hey, I understand that. But this the thing right here, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. After Jamel Charlo go up to 168 to fight um, Canelo Alvarez, I'm honest I really don't think he going to come back down to 154, man. At the most, he might come down to 160. You know, you got some people campaigning there, you know, some more paydays. You got Carlos Adamas, Triple G still there, Jaime Munguia, Ares Landy Lara even is WBA champion. So, you know, it's some fights there for Jamel that uh, he can take down at one, up at 160. And, um, you know, but putting on all that weight, how he feel, he going to be bulking up to get go to 168. And um, how he feel, he might feel a lot more powerful. That man might don't want to come back down to 154. Now, he has said in the past that he don't have a problem making 54, but he been making it for a lot of years, though, really and truly. So after he go up that far, man, I don't know. And then, you know, uh, Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Smith Jr. Um, and you know, I, I, I mentioned this cause somebody said, made a comment in my comments and I can't remember the name and I'm, I apologize, but I thank you though for, for mentioning it because is you right? I mean, Errol Smith and Terrence Crawford might fight a couple times at least. So you talking about July the 29th, right? You know, if it's a hard fought fight, they ain't go fight for at least six months. So you talking about the beginning of 24. So say somebody, you know, it's a hard fought fight. And then the next fight is, uh, you know, is a close fight as well. If they fight three times, this thing will be locked up to like mid 2024. You know, easy. And then they go fight. And then, you know, you know, tell them when they go uh vacate whatever so jerron ennis is sitting right there he said he want the winner air spence terrence crawford now it could just be one fight you never know some i'm gonna tell you this it's not outside of the realm of possibility that somebody could get knocked out i'm talking about square out but i mean it's more probable i i'll be honest i i do know that it is more probable that they will it will go to a decision i understand that you know um but i mean it's not outside the realm of possibility where man one of these guys could knock the other one smooth out understand what i'm saying but anyway in that case you might not see a rematch you know what i'm saying especially not right now those guys might move up and they might rematch later down the line at 54 or something later on but um and i don't but i still don't think either one of them go fight jerron ennis you know um but jerron ennis man he's a big 147 pounder and i think he's gonna run the roost man if if you know, whenever they get out of the way, and I don't think he's going to try to move up to 54 to get anything. I think he's going to buy this time, you know, because, I mean, the guy is 31 and 0 with 28 KOs. 31 fights, it is really time for him to fight for a title, and I know he's just itching for it. Um, but, you know, 
at 147, you still got some players there. Um, he said he have a problem fighting Stanley Onis. He, he named other names like Keith Thurman. Um, he named Ugas, Ugas as well. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, um, you know, you got Mario Barrios there. Um, so, it is what it is. But um, I, and you got a whole new, um, you got some big 140-pounders that be, might, you know, come to make up the next wave of 147 as well. Jose Ramirez is a big 140. Josh Taylor is a big 140. You know what I'm saying? Richard Comey, he could probably move up to uh, 47. So you got all these guys from 140 that could come up as well. And um, But I think Ennis is looking to fight somebody from the, the past era and uh, kind of make a statement um, if he doesn't get a championship fight. But it still would be exciting to see him fight some of these names that are still, you know, prevalent, even if they moving up from 40. Um, but, you know, Tim Zhu, man, I mean, you know, you got some fights there. Uh, I can't remember the guy name, man. He fought on Showtime on, on in this undercar. In this undercard, he was like a 160 pounder. I think his last name Taylor. He looked good, you know, uh, in his fight. He was saying something about fighting Tim Zhu, but he talking about 160. So I don't think Tim Zhu ready to move up to 160 yet, uh, because whatever happened, if Tim Zhu just be just a little bit patient, they probably go strip Jamel, or he might give up or vacate um, his belts. And I think Tim Zhu is what the mandatory. He like the next guy in line for one of them belts. I can't remember IBF, WBO, one of them. But anyway, I I mean I ain't look it up lately, but I know he is. But anyway, um, if he just be a little bit patient, they'll probably let him fight for it. You know what I'm saying? Fight one of the top contenders or whatever, and. Uh, you know, for a vacant belt because Jamel Charlo, they probably go ice him, man. They probably go make him um, give up his belts, at least one or two of them belts. Anyway, they go probably pressure him to give them up. But anyway, man, I mean, I don't know. What are y'all thoughts on it, this whole thing? It would shake up the division, man. I mean, Tim Zoo, man, um, 54 pounder. Um, see, this is the thing. I heard, uh, I think it was Blue Blood Sports TV. He came at it a different angle. I think he said something about, um, like, Terrence Crawford or Air Spence or whatever moving up. Like, Terrence Crawford facing Jamel. I, I, I mean, but if you're talking about it in the same sentence that Jamel might not come back down, I mean... Terrence Crawford still might look to become, if he wins, say he beat Errol Spence, he still could probably try to come back, go up to 154 if Jamel Charlo belts get dispersed um, and, you know, at least fight for one or two of them. Because I'm going to tell you this, Terrence Crawford will probably match up decently with Tim Zoo, honestly. Um <laughs> He might lick his chops at that fight. If he was talking about fighting Jamel, you know what I'm saying? Jamel been a beast at, at 154. So if Terrence Crawford would fight him, I know he shouldn't have a problem fighting Tim Zhu for that vacant title. Or if Tim Zhu fight for a vacant title, he come up and challenge him or something. But, um, I mean, it's some good fights there for Terrence our era, man. I mean... You got Danny Garcia up there. I think that'll be a good matchup. Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia. He ain't no champion, though. Terrence probably going to want him a champion. But uh, you got Danny Garcia. He been wanting to face Danny Garcia in the pros anyway. You got Fondora. You got Erickson Lubin. You know what I'm saying? But any of those guys, I mean, just like, especially Fondora, he's a big 154. Erickson Lubin been campaigning there for a while. Say those guys... Uh, want to move up to 160, man. You got some guys like Carlos Adamas, Jaime Munguia at 160, Ares Landy Lar, 
he at the WBA. You got Triple G. You know, you got some good fights for some guys that might be looking to move up from 154 to 160. So, man, this whole thing, man, with these two weight classes being locked up, 47 and 54, I mean, this thing could, if these guys get antsy want to move up, we could still see, man, look, it ain't my problem that to worry about if they go strip Jamel Chalo, I mean, I'm be honest with you, man, he finna get paid. So it don't really matter to me what happened um, and what happened with, you know, how long it's going to take. Man, Jerron Ennis, man, he just be a little patient. Errol Spence took a while. He was a little antsy about wanting to get a uh, championship fight. He ended up getting his fight. So, I mean, it's going to work out for Jerron Ennis. Um, I know he's getting a little, I think he like, what, 26 years old. He got 31 fights. He ready to do his thing, man. But uh, at the same time, it ain't, as a fan, it's not my, my job to worry about that kind of stuff. The only thing I'm worried about is, 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 2024 go be as star studded as 2023. <laughs> That's the only thing thoughts in my mind right now, you know, cause man, 23 been so man. Look, we been getting them one after another in 23, but this kind of shake up right here could turn 24 into a whole nother beast as well. So I'm I'm still like relishing over this whole like. How this thing looking, and I'm I'm intrigued by how it could play out. Y'all tell me y'all thoughts in the comments, man, about this thing. One four seven being locked up, one five four being locked up. What you guys think about for Jerron in his next move, Tim Zoo next move, and um these other guys that's in the up and coming weight classes that could move up to four seven or five four or these five four guys that might get a little antsy about it being locked up and move up to 60. What y'all think about it? Just let me know y'all opinion. This Daddy P, slap that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified every time it go down. This Daddy P, ew, out of there.